the people's platform Join me on the People's Platform this week as I speak to some of the most phenomenal international and local writers here in the historic city of Gaul at the Gaul Literary Festival. Nujin Mustafa is a Kurdish Syrian refugee and activist with cerebral palsy. She was raised in Aleppo, Syria and gained attention after traveling 3,500 miles by wheelchair, fleeing conflict in the Syrian civil war before arriving and resettling in Germany. She was listed as one of BBC's 100 women in 2018 and her story was featured on the television show Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. In 2019, she became the first person with disabilities to brief the United Nations Security Council. Nujin is now a powerful advocate for refugee youth, undertaking media interviews and speaking at a number of high-profile conferences, including a UNHCR Age, Gender and Diversity event at the Palais des Nations in Geneva and international TEDx events in the UK and Iraq. In 2019, at the first ever Global Refugee Forum, Nujin spoke about the importance of keeping children's dreams alive with Grover from the kids' educational TV series Sesame Street. She also appeared on a panel where she stressed the need for the active involvement and meaningful participation of people with disabilities in the planning, development and decision-making processes at all stages of the refugee response, stating, We are not asking this as a favour, this is our right. Nujin's story has been told in a book co-authored by award-winning journalist Christina Lamb, The Girl from Aleppo. My next guest at age 16 made the 3,500 mile journey from Syria to G uh, Germany in a steel wheelchair. She's a Syrian refugee and a powerful advocate for refugee youth. Her story, The Girl from Aleppo, was co-authored by award-winning journalist Christina Lamb. She's also the first person with disabilities to brief the UN Security Council on the need for protection of people with disabilities in areas of conflict. I'm so pleased to welcome to the show Nujin Mustafa. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Um, Nujin, the world around us is increasingly at war. You provide a face to an increasingly dehumanized crisis. Speak to us about what that means to you. I think what it means to me is that um, I feel very lucky to just give, uh, get to be um, a messenger or a, a teller of the of the story of you know the of the Syrian crisis, but also have many similarities with many other refugees all around, all around the world, and how um, you know I had the I had the and I feel just very fortunate to have to have had the opportunity to provide one example of what it is to be what it is like to be a refugee, what it is to, uh, like to be a person with a disability in a conflict, what it is like to be a Kurd, which is also a, a part of my identity. So I, I just really feel uh, very fortunate and uh, to, you know, to be able to fill that role. And I hope more of, um, more refugees and more people with disabilities can join on sharing that experience and so that you know our voices elevated even higher and we could be all of us could be heard by by more people and uh, you know and uh, and hopefully that will result in uh, uh, garnering more um, sympathy and empathy act, 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 uh, and empathy for um, for refugees as people rather than uh, uh, rather than a, a problem or an issue that needs solving, uh, and for you know for uh, for uh, for us to go back to the basics of, rega of, of regarding everyone as a human being, that you know, and especially in that in that situation where, where it's where it is a person who is in need of help and assistance and safety and security. Yeah. The normalizing of conflict across the world uh, and us. Um, witnessing them across social media uh, so rampantly has made us all collectively indifferent and desensitized to the pain of 
human beings and the othering of human beings. Exactly. Um, how do we um, how do we move from this? I think it's just um, it's it's important. That's why it's important to hear stories from people who have been, been impacted right. by um, uh, by these conflicts. It's very specific examples of it, not just uh, view it as a broader a broader issue or a broader thing. Because I think often, you know, the human element get lo gets lost in the translation of you know, news reporting or rec record keeping, or all of that, all of that is, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, too un un uninteresting for uh, the average person to pay attention to. Uh, but I think specific examples of what life is like in conflict, what, it, what life is like it, as a person with a disability in conflict or what life was like in many parts of uh, many parts of the world during during a conflict just brings it closer to um, to uh, the audience and you know stops us from seeing it as just just another thing that popped up recently you know? um, I'd like to um, ask you um, about the intersection between being a refugee yeah. and a person with disability yeah. and also you have stressed on the need for active involvement and meaningful participation of persons with disabilities in planning development and decision making processes what has the advocacy behind it been like? Take us through the process. For the intersectionality between uh, the refugee status and the disability, I think um, this is this is something that um, uh, maybe uh, maybe overlooked, if not pay, paid attention to, mm. because, for example, if I, if I am if I am a disabled person who does not speak the language of uh, the country in which I'm in. In my case, it, it was Germany a few years ago. I have no uh, way of. Um, uh, of of asking for services or need, or my uh, the, uh, the tools that I may need for my sure. for my daily life and reverse the reverse is also true. So for for, for example, something if I if there is if there is something that I need to do to improve uh, for my status, uh, you know, for legally or um, you know just you know as as a kind of a public service or uh, any kind of interaction with, with, with the legal system I, I wouldn't be able to do it if, if these buildings are not accessible and you know if these if, if the if the channels of communication are not available to me so if I if I am a hard of hearing person if there is no like if there is no um, hand la sign language interpretation I wouldn't be able to you know do my interview or um, interact with the judge or all, all of that. I think should be taken into account and in how bo both of these identities, identities are interact with each other and influence the daily life experience of a person. Sure. Yeah, and so and in a new country, you will also need access to information. So if I need a new wheelchair, where where do I need to apply? Uh, and if I and if I don't know the language, do I have actual interpretation that's gonna t you know that's gonna you know explain my specific situation? So how these how these um, aspects interact with each other and how um, it is is crucial to you know uh, having a positive experience when you arrive in a country. There is a refugee crisis mm -hmm. uh, in the world uh, as we speak. What is the role of states, international organizations, um, other stakeholders? and societally our responsibility in taking proactive uh, measures. I think the, the role of the state is, I think, to bring a, a different perspective closer to, together and to uh, try to eliminate the, the unknownness of, um, that each group may have to each, towards each other. So I think um, initiatives where you explain cultural differences, where you introduce ref uh, refugees to uh, refugees and people of the country to each other, to to the to their cultures, to the, the food, to the language, all of that is uh, plays a crucial role in humanizing the other, and uh, to, you know um, plays a role in you know, parties not seeing each other as a threat. 
you know, and I think voicing voicing um, your will, your uh, you know, the state uh, voicing um, um, the the will the, the willingness to help. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, these populations get back on their feet. So uh, that's what I can, so would describe it as, you know, and how, you know, to host the, you know, this um, guest uh, that they have uh, newly in their country, I think helps a lot in building, uh, you know, uh, building a, a community that is, uh, that is um, inclusive and accepting of each other. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, the role that the state, the state could play in, you know, through the uh, the initiative that, uh, initiatives I just mentioned, is just to bring perspective closer together, so that so that it's no longer a process of othering and and fear. I think we should all encourage uh, everyone to be more curious rather than than afraid about each other. Um, and that's and that's the role that that the state could play. Ind individually, I think you should. Um, what, what the best thing you can do is uh, uh, keep yourself informed. I, I think, and if so, for example, if you have um, a refugee center somewhere near nearby nearby you, that um, um, you could you could go and visit and volunteer and help. Uh, you could interact with uh, if if it's possible. You could interact with refugees and introduce to, introduce them to, to the city, for example, or try to offer help in t teaching them the language. Um, it's also I think it's very important to move away from uh, the topic of war a bit, to just to you know mm -hmm. treat them as an, um, you know as if as if there is as if there was there, there was no war. You know, um, I think it's important for. At least in the beginning, not to bring up the conflict, but just you know, uh, for the situation to be treated as as normally as you would, you know, introduce introduce yourself to a new person and ask, uh, what do you do for a living, or uh, what's your name, how old are you, um, what's your favorite food, um, do you like sports, all of that. I think it, you know, um, because emotionally and psychologically, I think if you treat them as uh, if if uh, when, refi when refugees as are treated as as survivors and, and not victims, I think that also helps in bridging um, connections between um, them and the community. The impact of education on refugee children and the role of the global community in ensuring access to yeah. uh, quality education because yeah. this is lacking across conflict zones in the world um, many uh, many of the uh, many of the action plans when it comes to conflict are lacking in in disability inclusion and refugee inclusion right so uh, you asked about the process of you know how you know how that advocacy works is um, i've had I've, I've had that happen so many times when i say Okay, uh, where I tell bodies or organizations, so they they would introduce their work to me, and and okay, and we would see this gap of refugees being missing or people with disabilities being missing from the initiative that is being uh, that is uh, taking place. So we have we have um, an education program, but it's not but it's not but it's not made with people with, uh, with disabilities in mind mm -hmm. uh, and yeah and and that's where my role comes in i get to poke people um, on the arm and say no you don't you don't get to do that actually it has to be you know it has to be inclusive of everyone um uh, and that's you know and that's where you know and that's where i feel there's an uh, there's an, a lot of uh, work that needs to be done on mainstreaming the um, discourse uh, yeah the, dis the disability and refugee aspect and just to for it to become automatic and uh, you know automatic part of the, the process of crisis response especially so if you are at a um, conflict region and you're try and, and you're trying to um, do reconstruction or you know reestablishing the um, uh, educational system you know it's with the inclusion of people with disabilities in the uh, in the planning um, uh, in the uh, in the plan and the planning constructing and implementation of these uh, of these of these initiatives i think that could that could help you know um, eliminate that gap that, that exists in um, 
uh, in many places. So I I, I experience that um, uh, you know on a daily basis, even in a, like even in a even in a first world country like Germany, you could we could you know I often I often ask my you know how you know if if there had been, if there had been like a, a an engineer with a disability in that you know in the construction of that building, they, they would have known that there needs to be a ramp or that it, this this thing is a is too high actually yeah, 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 mm. nobody with a uh, lots of people with disability would would not be able to use it so i th i think you know just just making sure that it's an auto, you know that the inclusion of people with disabilities and refugees is auto, um uh, made like an automatic process uh, is i think my, the the ultimate goal of just you know that that they are no longer thought of, you know an afterthought or oh i we forgot no uh, it has to be you know it has to be automatic and normal for um uh, refugees and people with disabilities to be part of the process and rather than just an add on to it later on absolutely yeah. nujin in a world that is increasingly difficult to navigate how do you continue to hang on to hope how do you continue to believe that positive societal transformation policy transformation um tapping into the kindness the empathy the humanity of human beings is possible i keep hoping because um uh, you you wouldn't be um, nobody would be able to go go on without it i i think um um uh, continually continually having faith is um, I, i think the you know the main motivator for mm -hmm. everything everything that i do and uh it's not you know i i, I believe that we um we uh, we have we have um we have good instincts and we but we should be encouraged to act on them i, I don't i don't believe that the average person wants all of you know to for all these conflicts to happen or wants to ignore um or wants to ignore you know uh, the, su the suffering of others uh, on the contrary i believe that we um, are are very um um empathetic creatures which well, but as i said i think it's very important to to bring people closer together so they can hear each other and no longer be afraid and even um, on 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 a on a state or um on a decision making level I, no but i don't, i don't think that exclusion is deliberate uh i think it's you know it's just um it's, it's, uh everyone needs gui needs guidance from time to time and you know human human beings are not not going to be perfect so um uh, you know everyone needs a rem needs a reminder so i think that once you keep uh, keep pushing uh people uh, you know decision makers will be, will be encouraged to make change that will be um that will positively positively influence the lives of um, everyone else nujin mustafa this was wonderful thank, thank you, you so much thank you Mother Festival for Arts 1st to 4th February 2024 is a celebration of contemporary art, music and entrepreneurship. Visit its exhibitions, talks and workshops, community market and epic finale concert happening at Mother of Fort River Market and University of Rohna. For details visit at Mother for Arts on Instagram and Facebook. Media sponsors TV1, Sirsa TV and News First. Education an invaluable asset that can never be taken away from you laying the foundation stone for a new library building for the students of Nakia Deniya Udagama aiming to open new doors for a brighter future for the people by the people Seventy-four health trade unions on strike, citing allowance disparity. Minister Kehliya Rambukwella ordered to report to CID on Friday, slapped with overseas travel ban. Group arrested during protest demanding Kehliya's arrest, released on bail. Sir. Online safety bill gets green light. 
Speaker endorses certificate. Sri Lanka revises fuel prices. Private bus operators and school transport services call for fare hike. Passport fee increased by 5,000 rupees.